All right, you get the gist. Everything on screen is what the story contains. Please, if you are not fine with these things, well, anyone should not be fine with these. Please, don't listen to these. Or just, I don't know. Watch my other, cha watch my other shit. It's fun. It's entertaining. Hopefully. Well, I uh, hope you guys enjoy, and let's go. The flames of a phoenix. At the strike of a biwa, Doma's some oh my god, surroundings warped, and he found himself in the Finity Fortress, face to face with Nakame. He grew curious at the reason for his summoning. From the information he was given, he would be in charge of watching a newly turned former demon slayer. So, and what what's so important about them? Doma thought to thought to wait for his master when Nakime pl oh my god plonk plunged the strings of her instrument and he was sent into another room of the fortress on the far wall of the room was a soft bed completely out of place from its wooden surroundings in the middle sat a startled haired colored demon the two made eye contact, red and eye-colored eyes narrowed while Doma's eyes grew wider. Immediately, his mind went blank. For once, all the canacity thoughts behind his charming mask had cicaded, which means just disappeared. Something swirled within his chest and pulled at the corners of his mouth. It was one of the first times he didn't have a callous oh my god callousing smile is this a motion for a long for as long as, t as doma can remember there was not a single time where he felt true emotion there wasn't a single time he truly felt anything since he was young he had been voided of all emotion yet with barely any practice with his i mean oh my god immunitation Oh my god. Immutations were perfect. It was easy, he thought. Keep a smile on your face and every one, everything will be appear normal. Be he became a king of oh my god. Of charisma of charismatic with followers bowing below his feet. Even when developing his own worship the rainbow head demon didn't feel pity nor even a hint of joy. Everything was just so blah. If there was any subluence of an emotion that Dama had, it would be envy. He often wondered what it felt like to not be empty, to feel full of emotion and squeals that actually reached his eyes. Maybe that was the reason why he liked d devouring his worshippers. This true betrayal and desire, sometimes even joy, he was shown so clearly on his face. The emotions were always so raw and intense that sometimes Doma could s sort of image what it felt like. As, the ta as time periods changed and the years ran by, Doma continued to imitate the expressions of those around him, hoping that no one day he had experienced that it would, oh my god, what it would be like to actually feel. Yet, after all this time, only one single person could do what centuries of living couldn't. Doma didn't even realize he was crying till he felt something wet running down his cheeks, bringing a hand up to his face. He, it was hint of another feeling confusion huh. tears were something he, his followers had shown when they w were on their bed deathbeds when their lives were flashing before their eyes when they were in despair Doma didn't know what this circumference action could come from such a pleasant feeling the rainbow eyed demon didn't know what to expect he was feeling, but he liked it. It felt as if he was floating, and the only thing grounding him was a hair-colored demon that laid before him. His mind was clear and light. He wasn't sure which emotion it was, but he wanted more. 
Delma inched closer to the woman, ignoring the look of distrust on the woman's face. Reaching out to touch her, he drew back at the scorching fire that burst from her body. Even though Delma had quickly retreated to the other side of the room, his body could not evade the explosion of fire. You're a baby demon yet. You are... Yet you already developed your own blood demon art? A genius! Despite half of his body drifting to the floor in a shower of ashes, the rainbowed eyed demon continued to praise uh, the hair colored woman, who was surrounded by a violent fire. The rainbowed eyed demon glanced at the beautiful purple flames in awe. Though he was far away from her, he could still feel the heat of her flames. It was intense that if he were to even just stand a foot closer than he was, his skin would be blasted off. Which basically means flamed off. Sorry. The woman ex- ex- oh my God, extinguished the fire, curled up on the bed. Like a curious kitten, the powerful flames began to spread the wood of the room catching on fire immediately. Sorry for the yawns. Immediately, Doma used his eyes to cast the expression. However, this demon art was n- was no match for the newly born demon. The flames continued to spread, reaching the pillars of the room. Slowly, the ceiling began to crumble. Just as the fire grew closer to the rainbow-eyed demon, scorching his skin, the hair-colored finally passed out. At the demon's red and ad-colored eyes rolled back into her skull, the purple flames disappeared, leaving ash and distressed as it, as it, uh, as it taken. In, the, in that time, the rainbow-eyed demon looked at a chance to crawl over to her sleeping form. From his one arm, he laid next to her, with the, with a, de- oh my God, detached part of his body slowly regenerating. He quietly squealed. Another foreign emotion crept up into his heart. If Domo was familiar with emotions, he would easily recognize his desire. However, clueless to what the throbbing feeling of his body was, he continued to ca- caress the hair-colored demon's face as she slept. Finally, the for- former phoenix pillar slowly stirred awake. Yin was cautious and tried to summon her fire, but found that she was too exhausted. Instead, she glared at the demon that laid beside her. There was still a quarter of his body that had yet to be healed. There is there something you need? Food or clothing? Oh, of course. You'll need to move to a new room. Who are you? Doma smiled, but this time he truly felt it. He did couldn't help but smile at the woman in front of him. He began. He became overwhelmed with the urge to make her comfortable, and, and if possible, see her smile as well. My name is Doma. I am Upper Moon Sue, and I work for that man. What are you doing here? I have been. I have been ordered to follow each and. And each and every one of your desires, my lady. So you'll do anything I want? He nodded. Doma wondered what she would request. He f- f- knelt down beside her bed, leaning his face onto the palm of his hands. Then answer my then answer my questions honestly, Yen demanded. Of course. Why can't I remember anything? Hmm. My memories like where I came from, who I am. Oh, I see. It's usually during it happens during the transformation into becoming a demon, either though, either though trauma or the biological changes. It's often that memories are lost. The information did little to fill the void of the hair-colored demon. The lack of emo- memories caused the distress to echo the emptiness of her heart. Still, she continued to ask questions with the hopes to at least satisfy, show her own curiosity. Where are we? We are in the Finity Castle, where the demons... I'm redoing this part because my camera cut out, sorry. Well, I said Jane Mike. 
We are in the Infinity Castle, where the demons under that man gathered for meetings. So, like a headquarters? Absolutely correct. What am I doing here? Well, you are here because that man wants you here. Uh, I see. So, I am really married to Muzan. Doma did not hesitate in answering. No, you're in absence. No courting, and there wasn't any, even a wedding. Muzan treated her well and gave her everything she wanted. But for some reason, Yin felt resumed at this, at this relevation. Seeing this subconscious relief appear on her face, the observant demon felt satisfied. Did I s- snitch on that man? Hmm. The mischievous de- demon didn't th- think he did. Muzan ordered him to listen to all of Yin's demands. He wanted the- She wanted the truth, and the truth... He- would be given, especially if it spoiled her affection for the demon king. What what was my life like before? Well, well, I don't know much, but your human life. But I do know that you were a demon slayer. A demon slayer? So I became what I used to kill? Very ironic, isn't it? Yin sat quietly. Staring at her hands, a drop of, oh God, a drop of longing, feeling her pool of emotions. What do I long for? She began to see the form of a person, yet her face was blurred. The hair-colored demon wanted nothing more for the image to clear. Her heavy memory irritated the woman deeply, her sharp nails digging into the skins of her thighs. Blood seeped from the torn skin. Hearing a gasp, she watched Doma pull her hands away from her body and look of worry on his face. Seeing the woman hurt made Doma feel unpleasant. He hated that feeling. Yin roughly yanked her hands out of his hold and flopped down on the charted bed. The rainbow-eyed demon began feeling more negative emotions at her rejection. He felt like clawing his heart out. Heart out. He felt like clawing his heart out to get rid of this unpleasant feeling, which nowhere to vent his fresh emotions, the demon strained himself. Leaving the room, Doma disappeared, despite the determination to share those awful feelings with the rest of his cult. A Taisho era secret, when Yang gets bored, she sits with Nakime, who plays her a song on her biwa. I am so sorry for all the yawning, cuts, people came into my room, or just my recording shut off, so yeah, but I'm sorry for all of those, and thank you for listening, bye lovelies!